Infection Control by 5th Year BDS Winter 06 Batch D Personal Protective Equipment Step 1. PPE Donning First, make sure your hand and arms are free from watches and jewellery. Next, wear the head cap and make sure your hair is nicely tucked under the head cap. The mouth mask can now be worn. Pick up the gown in such a manner that hands touch only the inside surface. Hold your arms out and slightly up as you slip your arms into the sleeves. Tie the strings. After the donning of head cap, mouth mask and gown, goggles should be worn. Alternatively, a face shield can also be worn. In the clinics, we should wear closed shoes. This is to prevent injury if there is any accidents, for example, dropping of instruments. Before gloving, it is important to wash our hands. Step 2. Hand Washing Technique Open the water tap with your elbow Wet hands and wrist with warm water. Use 2 to 3 squirts of liquid or foam soap. Leather soap and scrub hands well. Scrub fingertips into palm. And repeat for the other hand. Scrub palm to palm. Scrub in between fingers while keeping them interlaced. Scrub back of each hand with palm of other hand. Scrub fingertips while keeping fingers interlocked. Scrub each thumb clasped in opposite hand in a rotational movement. Scrub each wrist clasped in opposite hand. Again, use elbow to open the tap and rinse thoroughly under running water. Pat hands dry with a clean towel. Step 3. Donning Sterile Gloves Pick up one glove by the cuff using your thumb and index finger. Touching only the cuff, pull the glove onto one hand and anchor the cuff over your thumb. Slip your gloved fingers under the cuff of the other glove. Pull the glove over your fingers and hand using a stretching side-to-side -side motion. The cuff of the glove should be covering the knitted end of the gown. Part 2. Work Practice Control Proper Passing of Sterile Instruments Passing of sterile instruments are done by placing them onto a tray, which is then handed to the operator. Instruments should never be passed by hand or picked up from the floor.
Recapping Needle One Hand Technique After using the syringe, it should be recapped immediately. Uncapped needle is slid into the needle sheath which lies on the instrument tray or table. Ensure that the needle is fully covered by lifting the sheath from the tray and finally secure it by holding the sheath near the syringe adapter and locking it in place. Do not hold the needle sheath in one hand and attempt to secure the needle as it may lead to needle stick injuries. Passing of packed sterile instruments While passing packed instruments, the assistant should open the pouch without touching the instruments or the inner surface of the pouch. The instruments are handed over with the handle facing the dental operator. The assistant should not touch the instruments before handing it over to the dental operator. Plastic sheets, disposable sleeve and suction tips are removed and discarded appropriately into the waste bin. Upon doing so, with the help of disinfectant wipes, thoroughly clean all surfaces of the dental chair, including the headrest, backrest, dental lamp with its handle, tree, control unit and its attachments, the spittoon, suction unit and the three-way air syringe. Upon completion, cover the surfaces with disposable covers. Blood spill What should your management be in an event of blood spill? First, place an absorbent material on top of the blood spill. For example, you could use paper towels. Use full-strength sodium hypochlorite, commonly known as bleach, and pour sufficient amount on top of the absorbent material. Leave it undisturbed for 10 minutes for the sodium hypochlorite to take effect. After that, dispose contaminated absorbent material by covering it with one or two more layers and wipe it clean with gloved hands. Dispose the material into a biohazard waste bin. Lastly, you should mop the area with a disinfectant solution, for example, diluted sodium hypochlorite. Part 3. Infection Control of Environment The horizontal surfaces of the cabinets should be smooth and should not have visible gaps so that it is easier to be cleaned. The same point is applied to the floor of the clinic. Smooth surface prevents debris accumulation in the gaps, causing failure in infection control. Part 4. Waste Management Waste from the clinic is divided into two types, non-clinical waste and clinical waste. Non-clinical waste should be thrown in a regular waste bin which has been fitted with a regular garbage bag. Examples of non-clinical waste are sterilization pouches and tissue papers which are not contaminated with body fluids. Clinical waste which are not sharp are disposed into specific yellow waste bag with a biological hazard sign. Examples of clinical waste are extracted teeth and blood-soaked gauze. Sharp clinical waste like BP blades and needles should be thrown into Sharp's bin, which is made of hard plastic and is covered. The bin should not be filled more than the indicator line. To de-glove, grasp the cuff of one of the gloves with the opposite hand. While holding the cuff of the glove, pull the glove off. Grasp the cuff of the other glove with the other hand. Pull this glove off. 
Now both your hands are free from the glove. Dispose the gloves into a clinical waste bin. After degloving, remove goggles or face shield. To dispose the barrier gown, rip the strings off and remove it inside out without touching the outer surface of the gown. It is then rolled up and disposed into the clinical waste bin. Remove the face mask, fold it inside out and dispose into the clinical waste bin. Do the same for the head cap. Needles, LA cartridges and other sharps are disposed into the sharps bin. It has a safety feature and a lid to prevent accidents. Syringes should also be disposed into the sharps bin. Soft and hard tissues and body fluid contaminated items are carried on a tray to the clinical waste bin. They are then disposed carefully with a tweezer to prevent contamination of the floor or other surfaces. The end. Thank you for watching.